Likewise also the chief priests mocking him, with the scribes and elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. The thieves also which were crucified with him, cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It is important for the Israelites and all of Adam's descendants to know who the creator, the father is. The last few messages about the father has revealed not too many people know the father. A lot of Israelites and indigenous black people still cry to Baal for assistance. Israelites, a day is coming when the people of the Most High will no longer call him Baal. The Most High will remove the name of those false gods out of your mouths. And it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishai, and shalt call me no more Belai. When the Most High removed the name of the false idol gods from your mouth, you will finally know him. When you know the Father, he will answer your calls. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know the Lord. And it shall come to pass in that day, I will hear, saith the Lord, I will hear the heavens, and they shall hear the earth. When you call on other gods, don't expect the Most High to answer you and plead your cause. When the Israelites in the beast religion and in the awakening cry out to Yahshua instead of the Father, don't be surprised when your prayers return to you void. The time has come for the Israelites and all of Adam's descendants to know the Father. You must stop giving the Father's glory to another. A part of the awakening is for all of Adam's descendants to get to know their creator. Religion has taught you to worship false gods. Many Israelites have taken those false gods into the awakening. Duality is the deception the Satans use to get many to bow down to false gods and idols. For the past few weeks, the Most High has been revealing who he is to his people. It's up to the Israelites and indigenous black people to make a sound decision of who you will serve. You can no longer hide behind Messiah worship. A lack of knowledge is not an excuse with the Most High. The scripture said you perish for a lack of knowledge. The Most High called you out of darkness into his marvelous light to save your life in the awakening. You must choose whom will you serve. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now that a lot of Israelites are beginning to understand that they were chosen for a purpose, that purpose is to uphold the covenants the Most High made with our fathers before us, as well as with us when the presence of the Father descend on Mount Sinai to transfer the everlasting covenant to all of Jacob's descendants. Israelites, it is important that you understand that the Most High is a God of covenants. Without a covenant, don't expect anything from the Most High. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Religion deceived many to forsake the everlasting covenant. Israelites, I hope you're beginning to understand how important covenants are with the Most High. This is why the Most High says to make no covenants with the heathens and with their gods. I've said to you in many messages that you must break every evil covenant established in the spirit realm. As soon as you wake up, you must break all evil covenants made in the physical realm with the synagogue of Satan. Covenants are binding and the most high honor all covenants, regardless if they are evil covenants. 
You were chosen to uphold the everlasting covenant. The time has come for you to take your place. We need the covenants to continue to transfer from generation to generation. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Now that you know you must uphold the covenants, you are now aware that you must worship and serve the Father. The awakening is happening for you to return to the Father. The awakening is not for you to take the doctrines of Rome, alter the doctrines to suit you and continue to worship their gods. The purpose of the awakening is to return to the Father. You can't return to the Father if the gods of the heathens still have first place in your heart. The Most High will not compete with idols, and he shouldn't have to. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. There are some Israelites that are struggling with returning to the Father. The Messiah worship is deep-rooted in them that they cannot see nor hear. The God of this world has blinded their eyes to the point that they cannot see. The best way to help the Israelites and strangers that are still struggling with the doctrines of Rome is to expose the deceptions found in them. As you continue to hear the word of the Most High, it will penetrate your spirit and bring forth the change needed to break the stronghold the idols of the heathens have on the people being deceived by them. A very popular doctrine that is a stumbling block to many Israelites in religion as well as in the awakening is the doctrine of the Messiah being God in the flesh. A lot of people use the scriptures from John that say, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God as confirmation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. If you continue to read the first chapter in the book of John, verse 14 say the word became flesh. A lot of people said to me that verse 1 confirmed that the Messiah is the most high, the father in the flesh. A lot of Israelites are struggling to identify the alterations done in the scriptures. The reason that it is difficult for them to see the alterations, they are reading the scriptures without the spirit of the most high. The scripture said the Holy Spirit will reveal truth to us and tell us the things to come. Albeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Without the Holy Spirit, you will be deceived by the doctrines of devils, ingrained in your mind by the workers of iniquity in the beast religion. Also, you won't see the alterations made to the scriptures to give the other species of mankind power. Israelites, you must dig deeper when you're dealing with the word of the Most High. One scripture can have many meaning and can be telling you many different things. Just as a trial has many purpose. As you grow spiritually, the scriptures will begin to have different meaning. For an Israelite that is very new to reading the word of the Most High, John chapter 1 verse 1 will give them confirmation that the Messiah is God in the flesh because they are not mature enough to know that some scriptures are not literal. For someone like me who can see through the scriptures and get a deeper meaning, that verse revealed a lot to me. We will break down everything that verse is saying to me. Before we break this verse down, all who believe that John chapter 1 verse 1 is saying the Messiah is the most high in the flesh, the next verse say the same was in the beginning with God. The same was in the beginning with God. For the Israelites who are surface level readers of the word of the most high, how come you don't interpret the next verse like you did with verse one? The verse say the same was in the beginning with God. Verse two is making it known that there's two entities separating the two. For the Israelites being deceived by the doctrine from religion that John 1 and 1 confirmed the Messiah is the most high in the flesh, let us break down that scripture together. I hope this will help you make the proper decision to return to the Father and give him all the glory that belongs to him. When I read John 1 verse 1, starting with the first part of the scripture, it reads, In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word. 
Israelites, just that small part of that verse reveals so much. The scripture said, in the beginning was the word. Whose beginning is the verse referring to is the question to ask. The father has no beginning. There was never a time the father didn't exist. He always existed. That was the first thing the Holy Spirit pointed out to me in the verse. The Most High is not a created being. How can the Most High be the creator of all things and he himself was created? If the Most High is a created being, the next question to ask is who created him? When you dig deeper with the Holy Spirit, the scripture starts to open up. Also, when you grow spiritually, you will begin to see the scriptures in a new light. The Most High said in the book of Enoch that he is self-eternal. He is not made with hands and he never change. I am self-eternal, not made with hands and without change. If the most high is self-eternal and not made with hands, how can he have a beginning? Remember, he always existed. The scriptures in the book of John must be talking about the beginning to the word, a separate entity from the father who is self-eternal. Remember, the Most High already had spirits that existed long before he decided to create visible things from the invisible. From the invisible, he made all things visible, himself being invisible. When the Most High decided to create visible creatures from the invisible, the scripture in John is referring to that beginning. The Most High, the Father, is not subject to time. That is why he doesn't have a beginning. It was during the time the Most High decided to create visible things, the Most High created all of his visible creatures, the angels, all the creatures in the sea, the animals on land, the trees, plants, the earth, and finally the first man. Israelites, did you know you were with the Most High in the beginning as well? Our existence didn't start when we were conceived in our mother's womb and our mothers gave birth to us. Our beginning started long before we were formed in our mother's womb. The book of Jeremiah said before the Most High formed us in our mother's womb, he knew us. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Not only did the Most High knew us before we were born, but he also appointed us and set us apart to do his will. The book of Enoch said everyone's soul was created before the foundation of the earth was laid. And Proville told me all the things that I have told thee. We have written, sit and write all the souls of mankind. However, many of them are born and the places prepared for them to eternity. For all souls are prepared to eternity before the formation of the world. The book of Enoch said all souls that will inherit eternity was formed before the formation of the world. Before the Most High made men on the sixth day, we existed long before the Most High made us visible. Just like the word existed before it became flesh. I hope you're understanding what I am saying to you. Israelites, when a physical death takes place, it does not conclude it is the end of our existence. A physical death is the end of our journey in this realm. After our spirits leave our earthly body, eternity starts for us. We will continue to exist, but in another realm. In the beginning, when the Most High created the earth, we existed just as the scripture state. The verse in the book of John is talking about the beginning to a creature the Most High created that became flesh. Israelites, the Most High can't be the creator and a created being at the same time. If the word that is spoken of in the book of John is the most high, then the most high would be a liar. The scripture said, let the word of the most high be true and every man a liar. God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. The most high is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man, that he should repent. God is not a man, that he should lie, neither the son of man, that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? The Most High said he is self-eternal and not made with hands. 
The word is a created being made by the most high. Israelites, just those few words in the verse that said in the beginning was the word revealed that the word is not the most high. The created creature, the book of John calls the word is not the father. Who is the word the book of John is referring to? Israelites, everything the most high created is living. In the message, the earth is groaning. I explain how everything from the trees to the elements are all living. There's nothing the most high created that is not living. Even darkness is a living spirit. The book of Enoch revealed to us that before darkness became visible, he is a spirit called Arches. And I summoned the very lowest a second time and said, let Arches come forth hard. And he came forth hard from the invisible. And Arches came forth hard, heavy, and very red. And I said, Be open, Arches, and let there be born from thee. And he came undone, and age came forth, very great and very dark, bearing the creation of all lower things. And I saw that it was good, and said to him, Go thou down below, and make thyself firm, and be for a foundation for the lower things. And it happened, and he went down and fixed himself, and became the foundation for the lower things. And below the darkness there is nothing else. Likewise, Israelites, the created creature in the book of John called the Word is a living spirit. If wisdom is a spirit and everything the world declared to be personality or emotions are spirits, anger is a spirit, love is a spirit, the word of the Most High is also a spirit that is living. The scripture said that the word of the Most High is alive and powerful. The word is sharper than a two-edged sword. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Not only is the word powerful and alive, the Most High spoke the world into existence in the beginning. That is how the word was with the Father in the beginning of creation. Israelites, when you go deeper with the Holy Spirit, Everything that was hidden comes to light. Let us continue to analyze John chapter 1 verse 1. The second part to the verse said, And the Word was with God. And the Word was with God. The Most High spoke the world into existence. When the Father was creating visible things from the invisible, the Most High said, Let there be light, and it was so. In verse 3 of chapter 1 in the book of John say, All things was made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. The Most High, the Father, spoke the world into existence. The only thing that was not spoken into existence were the angels and Adam and Eve. The book of Enoch revealed how the Most High created the angels as well as Adam and Eve. The Word is a living spirit. The angels are spirits, and we are spirits as well. Our spirit is housed in our human body. In order to get a greater understanding of who the word is, you have to read the books that were removed from the Bible. The book of Adam and Eve that I frequently use give us more information about the word and the identity of the word. When Adam and Eve needed to nourish their body with food, it was the word of God that instruct Adam to take the wheat and make bread from it. Then the word of God came again to Adam and said unto him, Take of this wheat and make thee bread of it to nourish thy body withal. And God gave Adam's heart wisdom to work out the corn until it became bread. Adam and Eve interacted with the word of God on multiple occasions. When the Most High promised to save Adam and his seed and accepted the blood offering Adam and Eve made to the Most High for forgiveness of sin, the Most High sent the word of God to Adam to tell him that as he shed his blood, he will do the same when he becomes flesh. Then came the word of God to Adam and said unto him, O Adam, as thou hast shed thy blood, so will I shed my own blood when I become flesh of thy seed. And as thou didst die, O Adam, so also will I die. And as thou didst build an altar, 
so also will I make for thee an altar on the earth. And as thou didst offer thy blood upon it, so also will I offer my blood upon an altar on the earth. And as thou didst sue for forgiveness through thy blood, so also will I make my blood forgiveness of sins and blot out transgressions in it. Israelites, did you notice in the scriptures, it was the word of God that spoke with Adam, not the most high, the father. The most high sent the word of God to do his will. Two different entities. The word of God explained to Adam what would happen to him when he becomes flesh of his seed. This is the same word of God that was with the most high in the beginning John spoke of. I want to show you in the scriptures that the word of God is the Messiah, the deliverer. When I tell you the identity of the word of God, you will see for yourself that the doctrines of Rome is false and a major stumbling block to you. The book of Adam and Eve does not tell you the name or identity of the word of God. In order to find the truth in the altered books, the Holy Spirit must lead you. I will share one more scripture that will confirm that the word of God is the Messiah. In the book of Adam and Eve, the word of God came to Adam and said to Adam that suffering will come upon him when he is made flesh. After this came the word of God to Adam and said, O Adam, thou hast determined beforehand the days in which suffering shall come upon me when I am made flesh, for they are the fourth Wednesday and the preparation day Friday. The key word in the scripture you just heard made the word of God will be made flesh making the word of God a created being remember the most high the father is not a created being before Adam transitioned to the afterlife he gave his son Seth instructions it was a tradition of the fathers to gather their children to instruct them when Adam was instructing his son Seth Adam told Seth what to do with his body as well as with the gifts the Most High gave to him from the garden. Adam revealed to his son Seth that his body must be buried in the middle of the earth with the gifts the Most High gave to him. Adam went on to prophesy what would happen to his body in the gifts. Adam also prophesied about the word of God. He then turned to his son Seth and to Eve his wife and said to them, Preserve this gold, this incense, and this myrrh that God has given us for a sign for in the days that are coming, a flood will overwhelm the whole creation. But those who shall go into the ark shall take with them the gold, the incense, and the myrrh together with my body and will lay the gold, the incense, and the myrrh with my body in the midst of the earth. Then, after a long time, the city in which the gold, the incense, and the myrrh are found with my body shall be plundered. But when it is spoiled, the gold, the incense, and the myrrh shall be taken care of with the spoil that is kept, and not of them shall perish until the word of God made men shall come. When kings shall take them and shall offer to him gold in token of his being king, Incense in token of his being God of heaven and earth and myrrh in token of his passion. Cold also as a token of his overcoming Satan and all our foes. Incense as a token that he will rise from the dead and be exalted above things in heaven and things in the earth. And myrrh in token that he will drink bitter gall and feel the pains of hell from Satan. After the death of Adam, the Most High sent the word of God to Seth to speak with Seth concerning Adam. The word of God that spoke with Seth is the same word of God that interacted with Adam and Eve. The books the heathens made available to us will not disclose the identity. They will only disclose the identity that will support the alterations they made to the scriptures. When the Holy Spirit is guiding you, the Holy Spirit will help you make the connection. Israelites, I want to show you in the scriptures that the word of God interacted with Seth before and after Adam's death. And when they had ended their offering, the word of God came to Seth, the eldest among them, saying unto him, O Seth, 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 three times. 
as I was with thy father, so also shall I be with thee until the fulfillment of the promise I made him thy father, saying, I will send my word and save thee and thy seed. But as to thy father Adam, keep thou the commandment he gave thee, and sever thy seed from that of Cain thy brother. The reason I wanted you to know that the word of God interacted with Seth the undisclosed book that I have read revealed who spoke with Seth and gave him instructions when Adam transitioned. The reason I don't disclose the name of that particular book, there's a lot of alterations in that book. Only the Most High can give you understanding. I will let the Most High lead you to that book if the Most High believe you can handle that book. When they had been praying and imploring for many hours, the angel Michael appeared to them and said, I have been sent to you from the Lord. I am placed by God over the bodies of men. I tell you, Seth, prophet, don't cry or pray and beg on account of the oil of the tree of mercy to anoint your father Adam for the pains of his body. Then the sun was darkened along with the moon and the stars for seven days. And Seth in his mourning embraced from above the body of his father. And Eve was looking on the ground with hands folded over her head. And all her children wept most bitterly. Michael the angel appeared and stood at the head of Adam and said to Seth, Rise up from the body of your father and come to me and see what is the doom of the Lord God concerning him. His creature is he and God has pitied him. Then Seth saw the hand of God stretch out holding Adam, and he handed him over to Michael, saying, Let him be in your charge until the day of judgment and punishment, until the last years when I will convert his sorrow into joy. Then he will sit on the throne of he who is his replacement. Adam transitioned to the afterlife before Eve. Before Eve transitioned, she gathered all her children to her and spoke with them. In the same undisclosed book, Eve revealed the identity of the one that spoke with her and Adam when they broke the commandments of the Most High. Listen for yourself. Six days after Adam died, Eve knew that she would die. So she assembled all her sons and daughters, Seth with 30 brothers and 30 sisters, and Eve said to all, Hear me, my children, and I will tell you what the archangel Michael said to us when I and your father broke the command of God. On account of your transgression, the Lord will bring on your race the anger of his judgment, first by water, the second time by fire. By these two, the Lord will judge the whole human race. The book of Adam and Eve referred to Michael as the word of God. The undisclosed book revealed to you who Adam, Eve, and Seth interacted with. Only the Holy Spirit will reveal these things to you. I will give you one more connection. It was Michael who removed Adam and Eve from the garden. The undisclosed book revealed this. The book of Adam and Eve said it was the word of God that removed them from the garden. After I had worshipped the Lord, immediately... Michael, God's archangel, seized my hand and threw me out of the paradise of God's visitation by his command. Michael held a wand in his hand and he touched the waters which were around about paradise and they froze solid. Then came the word of God to Adam and Eve and raised them from their dead state, saying unto them, Why came ye up hither? You intend to go into the garden from which I brought you out. It cannot be today, but only when the covenant I have made with you is fulfilled. The word that became flesh is not the father. You heard in the undisclosed book that the Most High gave to Michael, Adam, and gave him charge over him until the day of judgment and punishment, and the Most High converted his sorrow into joy. The scriptures in the Bible said that Michael was the prince over our people. The book of Enoch also said he was over the righteous. Everywhere the Messiah is supposed to be, Michael is present. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael your prince.
and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Israelites, every creature the Most High created have a name. The reason you don't know their names, the workers of iniquity who altered the scriptures removed the names of the angels, people, and the Most High. They replaced the names with titles. When you're reading the scriptures, you need to know who is speaking and who's the targeted audience. If you don't know, you will fall for the deceptions in the scriptures. When I say the Satans, I want you to know there's multiple Satans. The scriptures refer to the fallen angel that wanted to be like the Most High as Satan. Satan is a title and it means adversary. You have many adversaries. All the creatures created by the Most High have their own name. The synagogue of Satan removed the names to confuse you and to better insert themselves and their gods into the scriptures. And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen has sought to paint the likeness of their images. If the workers of iniquity did not remove the names of the angels, the original people, and the Most High from the scriptures, there wouldn't be any confusion of who is the Father and who is the Messiah. The reason there's so much controversy about the Father and the Messiah, the alterations done to the scriptures are confusing the people. If Rome truly served the Father, they wouldn't alter the scriptures, remove the name of the Father, as well as the original people in the scriptures. They replace the names with European names to better deceive you. No matter what they do to the scriptures, as long as you have the Holy Spirit, you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Israelites, when you go deeper, the Most High will reveal everything you want to know. Don't be a surface level Israelite. Go deeper. The final part of John chapter 1 verse 1 say, The Word was God. And the Word was God. Israelites, we already established that the Word cannot be the Most High because the Word is a created being. Anything can be a God. The angels are gods. That is why they are known as the sons of God. The idols and the gods of the heathens are fallen angels. Some heathens worship animals and make these animals their god. Some pagans worship the elements as god. The heathens worship other people as gods. Anything can be a god. That is why we shouldn't give the Most High the God title. The Most High is greater than the title God. The high-level workers of iniquity replace the name of the Most High with God, Lord, and the many other names they inserted into the scriptures. Because of this, everyone called the Most High, the Father, God. Many things can become gods. Even the objects created by the heathens are gods to certain people. The Israelites had no problem worshiping the golden calf idol and many other idols. Money is a god to many people. The idols of the heathen are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. When the scripture said the word was God, the question to ask yourself, which God are they talking about? Not everyone believe in the same God. The God of the Christians is not the same God as the Jewish people and Muslim people. The gods of religion is not the same God as the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember, the God of this world is Satan El. Some of you know him as Lucifer, Satan, and many other names. The word of God is a son of God. The sons of God are another name for the angels. Israelites, I hope the scriptures are becoming clearer for you. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. The word of God is the anointed son of God that became flesh to fulfill everything that was written about him. Part of his role when he became flesh was to lead the lost sheep of the house of Israel back to the father. We were supposed to follow him back to the father. The Satans deceive you in religion. They transformed the son of God into the most high in the flesh and made you worship him instead of the father. 
The God in the flesh doctrine is a false doctrine that many Israelites need to let go. If you don't, you're guilty of idolatry. The scripture said the most high does not operate in the flesh. We cannot please the most high in the flesh. The flesh does what is contrary to the spirit. Why would the most high, the father, become flesh? So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Israelites, all you have to do is ask the father who he is and he will reveal it to you. The problem many Israelites have is that they won't ask the Most High. If you simply ask the Father the questions you ask me and other teachers, it would eliminate all of your confusion. Some have not because they ask not. Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. There's too much truth out here for anyone to continue to allow themselves to be deceived by the doctrines of Rome. Some of you were seeking the Most High and he brought you into the awakening. The truth that is spreading around the world through the anointed teachers, the Most High place in this generation to help you. Many of you are rejecting the truth because the truth does not correspond with the doctrines in religion. Many Israelites and indigenous black people are now defending the very doctrines that kept them in bondage. You're conspiring against yourself. The time has come for you to know there's no one else besides the Most High, the Father. The time has come for you to return to the Father. The Word of God became flesh to fulfill everything that is written about Him. The Word of God did not come for you to worship Him. Listen to the Messiah and give all the glory and praises to the Father. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Today, the identity of the Word is made known to you. Israelites, break the evil covenants you made in religion. You should be the ones teaching the heathens. You are the people chosen to uphold the covenant, not the heathens. It's your destiny. You were chosen before the formation of this world was created. Stop giving your glory to the heathens and take your place. And the devil, taking him up into an high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. But that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will. I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. <laughs>